This presentation is being brought to you by the Southern University Ag Center, Southern University Intramural Sports, Southern University and A&M College, and the Southern University Counseling Center. Okay, hi, my name is Paige Haley. I am a fourth year doctoral student at the Chicago School of Professional Psychology at Xavier University in New Orleans, Louisiana. And I am currently a practicum student at the Counseling Center at Southern University. And I'm gonna be talking briefly about depression and how to manage depressive related symptoms. So first of all, what is depression? So most people will feel down from time to time. That's kind of like a natural response to stress and tension. Um, when people experience loss or disappointment or rejection, you know, those are some normal things that people can experience. However, depression is when these feelings of down, these down feelings, so feeling sad, uh, they become so intense and long lasting that they begin to become problematic and debilitating. Uh, they begin to interfere with your uh, daily functioning. So socially, academically, like you're not hanging out with your friends as much, not going um, you know, to dinner, not going to class, doing your assignments, things of that nature. However, depression is one of the most common uh, mental health problems that mental health professionals see. So if you are experiencing depression, you're not alone. It is you know, seen very frequently. And it can be experienced at any point during your lifetime. So just because you didn't have it when you were a child, at some point in time, you may have it later on in life. It just depends. And depression affects everything. So it affects your mood, it affects how you think, and also how you behave, which I'll get into a little bit more of that in just a minute. So um, the word depression is often used, you know, it's commonly used um, in everyday language to describe a number of feelings. However, like specific and typical signs of depression include, of course, feelings of sadness and down. Also, um, individuals have trouble either sleeping more or sleeping less. People tend to be more irritated, so their buttons get pushed more easily. Also, they tend to experience a lot of inappropriate or unnecessary guilt. So feeling bad for something that they shouldn't necessarily feel bad for or guilty for are also feeling like excessively bad for something minor. Uh, another common symptom that they experience is just lack of energy. They have no energy. They feel very tired, can't have trouble getting out of bed. And then they also start experiencing, they have a lack of interest in things that they used to find fun. So they no longer enjoy doing the things that they used to enjoy. So if they used to love going shopping or doing arts and crafts, they no longer find that fun for them. Another common symptom is um, concentration and attention difficulty. So you're sitting in class trying to listen to a lecture and you just cannot focus on the lecture. Your mind is somewhere else. Also, another symptom is attention is appetite. So they tend to eat, people can eat more or people eat less, which often results in you know, weight gain or weight loss. And then also your processing speed. So things, um, you're taking in information a lot more slowly than you used to. So from your environment, so you're listening to the lecture and you may not even be able to take all that information in um, as the teacher's lecturing. And then last but not least, you're thinking a lot of thoughts about death or hurting yourself. Okay, so how does depression happen? Our thoughts, feelings, and behaviors are connected. So we all have these experiences and life events that may result in one experiencing depressive symptoms. However, these feelings of depression come about because of how we interpret and perceive and um, think about those experiences and life events, which typically for a depressed individual, those thoughts are negative. So not positive, you're thinking in a negative way. Those negative thoughts then cause those sad feelings, down feelings, 
which then usually leads to a particular type of behavior, like sleeping more, like not hanging out with your friends, etc. And then it continues. It's this repetitive cycle. So one thought leads to one a feeling and then that behavior, and it just keeps going and going and going. And it's like a snowball effect. Uh, so here's a quick example. So the thought like popped in my head, my friend hasn't called me in a while. You start to feel like you're not worth, you're worthless. So maybe she doesn't like me. Uh, I'm not worthy. So what you're going to do? Well, I'm just going to stay at home. I'm not feeling well anyway. And so that'll just keep going. And it doesn't necessarily have to be about the friend. It could be about school. Like you're trying to do homework and you're like, this is too hard. I'm a failure. And then you just close your book and stop working on it. Uh, so it can be a lot of different things. Okay. So how can we relieve or reduce the depress depressive symptoms? Behaviorally, one of the most important things is get our sleep back on this thing, get our sleep back on schedule. So practicing good hygiene because oftentimes, like I mentioned earlier, sleep uh, people with depression tend to sleep more or sleep less. So make a schedule, make a sleep schedule. Also, you know, practice good sleep hygiene. So um, only get in your bed, only use your bed for sleeping. So do not get in there to like watch TV or talk on the phone. Also, you know, don't drink caffeine right before you go to bed. Don't be, play on your phone while you're trying to go to sleep. Um, things of that nature. Also, one of the most important initial goals for de individuals with depression is scheduling activities. So most individuals, like I mentioned earlier, have withdrawn from activities that they had um, previously, found, previously found pleasurable and now have moved to kind of staying in bed or sitting around, not really doing much anymore, which maintains and increases those feelings of negative, like those depressive down feelings. And so oftentimes the person may think, what, like you want me to get up and start doing things? I don't think that's gonna help. I'm tired all the time. Maybe I should wait till I feel better, but actually research shows that is the exact opposite. The way people get over their depression is to get more active first, and then they start to feel better. So make, a, make an activity schedule. And it doesn't have to be major things. This can be like just calling a friend, maybe um, doing you know some little chores, folding the clothes, doing something to kind of get you going. Reading a book, nothing major. It doesn't have to be big extreme activities. Just making a schedule of different activities to do throughout the day. Okay, next is how can we believe or reduce depressive symptoms through our thoughts? So as I mentioned earlier, we have these negative thoughts. So we need to be more mindful of those negative thoughts. So whenever we're, we notice that our mood changed, whenever we're feeling sad, what were you thinking about right before then? What was your thought? and then investigate that thought. So critically evaluate it. Because a lot of the times, our thoughts, those negative thoughts aren't true or they aren't 100% true. So investigate it. So what's the most realistic case scenario? What's the worst case scenario? What's the best case scenario? What's the evidence that that thought is true? What's the evidence that that thought is not true? So if your friend didn't accept your dinner invitation and you automatic, your thought automatically goes to, well, she doesn't like me anymore, well, investigate that. What's the, what's the likelihood that that's actually true? Well, I mean, she could be busy with other things. Currently, we're in the middle of a, you know, pandemic, so that could be playing a factor. There's lots of different reasons for her not accepting your invitation to her dinner, aside from the fact that she doesn't like you. There's plenty of other reasons for that, for her not accepting it. So kind of evaluating that thought. And last but not least, how can we reduce symptoms with like emotionally. Pretty much just relates to like self-care. So taking care of yourself, um, practicing relaxation techniques and mindfulness. There are tons of relaxation and mindfulness apps and YouTube videos, check them out. Also just doing something fun like for yourself to take your mind off of things in a sense. So whenever you are, start your thoughts, start you know kind of getting negative go do something to distract, kind of take your mind off of it. So if it is watching a favorite TV show, or if it is like um, 
calling a friend or doing something fun or some kind of arts and crafts, whatever it is, do something to kind of take your mind off of it. Okay, well, that's all I have for depression, but just want to but a last thing here, I mean, if you are experiencing depressive symptoms or feeling overwhelmed or just need somebody to talk to, the counseling center is here, is available. So give us a call, send us an email, um, and we can get you scheduled for an appointment. Also, if you have any, um, for any additional information, see our website uh, page, because it's kind of giving updates relating to the pandemic and what what is going on right now as far as the counseling center and how they are operating. All right. Thank you for your time. Take care. Stay safe.